And today I'm super excited to be talking to you about transformer models and how we can operationalize them and operationalize models in general. Um, it, will, it will apply to things that aren't just transformers. So this is what our end project will look like. I just wanted to show you so you can kind of get an idea. And what's happening here is we actually have a transform model that has been optimized and deployed to a browser and it's actually doing inferencing on the client in the browser using the hardware of the desktop, which is really cool. Um, and if you take a look, it actually gets really good um, uh, accuracy as well. So the model that we're gonna be using is a optimized BERT model. Um, and we're gonna be building that sentiment analysis, real time um, inference on device, which you just saw. So the model that we're gonna be using is a model that actually Microsoft um, did a di distillation technique on to, uh, really uh, to really reduce the size of the BERT model. And then it also made it task agnostic. So that allows us to go in and fine tune it with uh, open data set um, that is on actually the Hugging Face Hub. So both this model is posted on the Hugging Face Hub, which we'll take a look at, and also the emotions data set that we're gonna use to fine tune it. All right, let's take a look at uh, the Hugging Face Hub and take a look at this model and the data set that we're gonna be using. And then we're also going to uh, fine tune and train this model. So here's the model that we're gonna be using, the extreme distilled uh, BERT model from Hugging Face. And here is the emotions data set that we're going to be using, also available on the Hugging Face Hub. So if you take a look, you can um, actually kind of cruise through the, the data here, right, in the UI, which is pretty nice. Um, and then we'll actually be able to uh, download the model and the data set and train all through the API for um, transformers. So now that you saw on the Hugging Face Hub where the model lives and the data set, now let's take a look at the notebook that shows us how we fine tune this model. So here is the model name that we wanna get. Here's the data set. Again, these are the Hugging Face APIs that um, have everything that we need. So it makes it really super easy to download the pre-trained model and the tokenizer. So here we are able to download the data set. And then we have our tokenizer from the transformer and from the pre-trained model. And then um, down here, we are just mapping that data set to the uh, tokenizer with a function. And we're splitting it out into test and train. You can take a look at the length here. So we're setting it to our CUDA GPU device in the model and then sending it uh, to the device for training. Or, so it's on the right device for training. So for our evaluation, um, we want to take a look at what the accuracy is um, and print that out. So we're computing um, the accuracy based on the actual versus the uh, predictions and getting back um, how well it's doing. Then we're uh, setting up our training arguments and creating our trainer, all with the Transformers API. We're giving it our model, our training args, our data sets, um, and our compute metrics. If we uh, scroll down, you can see we're doing 24 epics, and then we can see how many steps in each um, optimization. So you can see as we go and train, we should be seeing the, the loss start getting lower. Scroll way down. So by um, Epic 13, you can see that our loss is down to 30. Our value evaluation accuracy is up to 90. And then by the end, you can see uh, where our loss and eval accuracy was up to. And that's our last Epic. And now we're going to take a look at exporting our PyTorch model into that Onyx format and running it with Onyx Runtime Web, which is the um, package that allows us to do inferencing in JavaScript. So first thing, we actually write in Transformers, we have the convert to Onyx built in. So here you can see that we are uh, creating a pipeline with Transformers for our text classification because we need both our model and our tokenizer in the pipeline. So like when you run a natural language processing model, the first thing that happens is we tokenize our our text, right? So we turn those words into numbers and then we process them in our model and then we get back our result and then we decode that into um, the answer. And then we're calling that convert and then convert PyTorch. We're sending in our pipeline and then we're setting the offset. So there's different operation uh, sets that are part of Onyx Runtime that support different operators that you may have used when building your model. Uh, it does default, I think, to nine. I'd have to double check the source to know exactly what it defaults to. 
Uh, but I definitely recommend overriding it to the newest offset that supports the operators in your model. And you can take a look at our GitHub if you want to see um, which offset. If you choose one that doesn't work, it will let you know. And then you can see that we're giving it that output and the um, use external format is set to false. So because I've already ran this, you can um, take a look over here and we can see that our classifier out is right here. Need to install Onyx Runtime here. And then from Onyx Runtime, um, we're gonna call quantization uh, or quantize dynamic. We're gonna send in our current model, the model that we want out and what we want to quantize it at. So, and from there, then we get back our quantization int a model that we just created. And if you take a look at the size difference from the classifier, you can see that this drastically reduced the size of our model. Right, so that's exactly what we wanted. Um, now we have a much smaller model that we can uh, actually deploy and use in the web. Let's import this. We're using the newest version. Um, so then when you actually go to use Onyx Runtime, you create this inference session and you pass in your model. So we now have a session for both the uh, unquantized model and the quantized model. So now that we've created our session, we can run the input feeds. We ran two different models here so that we can uh, check the prediction accuracy and see what the difference is now that we've quantized our model. So we can actually see that we lost a little bit of accuracy, but for the uh, performance gain from the redu reduction of size in the model and the accuracy that it still performs at, we're okay with this. Okay, let's jump into our JavaScript code. So you see here that we are importing our BERT tokenizer, which is actually just um, one that we've grabbed from uh, TensorFlow. So there, since it's a BERT model, we're able to just grab that one. We don't have to create it ourselves. And then we're gonna um, add that into our JavaScript. Um, the next thing we're gonna add is the package Onyx Runtime Web. So this is what's gonna allow us to do inferencing in JavaScript. And uh, there's packages in many languages like C Sharp and Java and um, C++, probably forgetting some, but yeah. There's packages in all types of languages that give you the flexibility to do inferencing in um, languages outside of the language that you use to train your model, which is pretty awesome. It's super useful in a lot of different ways. So we are using Wasm. So there's actually two different ways with um, Onyx Runtime Web. You can use uh, WebAssembly or you can use WebGL. Um, right now for operator support, Wasm has better coverage. So we want to use that. Um, if you wanted to use WebGL, all you have to do is actually change this to WebGL. Uh, the other thing is Wasm is only using CPU. So we aren't able to uh, use the optimization that we might get from using the GPU. But again, for this model, it works just fine. So those are some considerations, again, when you're thinking about uh, deploying. So we are getting our quantized model, um, which is right here. And then we're creating our inference session. So just like we did in Python, where you saw that we created our, um, our session and then we ran the session, it's the same thing in, in each language. So just like before, we're creating our inference session, we're sending in our model um, and our options here. And then we're just gonna asynchronously load that. Then we're calling that load tokenizer. We're setting up our results, our result options, our label options, I should say. So like we talked about a little bit earlier, um, we have to encode the text in order to get that to run through our model. So this is our JavaScript um, logic for uh, encoding our text. Then we're gonna take the session that we created with Onyx Runtime, and we're gonna call that to run and send in our model input. And then we're just creating our list. So I'm not really gonna go, this is a React app. I'm not really gonna go into the React specific things. Um, but the sample is available and you'll have, I'll give you the link um, at the end of this demo. So if you want to jump into some of the other pieces, but since we are now ready to run, let's take a look. Just call npm start and this will start up our demo. We could just put something like, I like machine learning. And we can see that we have love, adoration, approval, joy, uh, neutral, amusement, I don't like, I don't know what to mean, like the cold. 
And we can see disapproval, annoyance, neutral, disappointment, anger. You can say, I like the warm. And then you'll see actually that you'll get um, both disapproval and love as the top one. So if you have a multi-sentence review and you're trying to kind of, you can get kind of average scores through that and see that it's going to pick up on the individual um, sentiments within multiple um, sentences in your result. So there you go. That is how we were able to take a large transformer model, um, grab an open source distilled version of it, then quantize it and use Onyx Runtime to do all of our inferencing on the edge. Uh, we also have a LinkedIn and a Twitter to stay connected. And then here are the links to the model and data sets that we used. And then also, uh, if you want to check out the source code that we used and um, check out a blog post on the demo that we did, uh, those links are there. They were provided by our community member, Joe Burgum. So thanks so much for hanging out. And I look forward to seeing what you build.